Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to make an FPS counter. We'll start by creating a screen GUI. Inside, we'll create a text label. Inside the text label, create a local script. We'll use the render stepped event of the run service. This event fires right before each frame is rendered, so with an FPS of 60, the event will fire 60 times in one second. The event provides us with one parameter called delta time. Delta time is the time in seconds between the previous frame and the current frame. If we have the time it takes for one frame to be rendered, we can work out how many frames can be rendered in one second. In this example, we have a delta time of 0.1 seconds. If we flip time over frame, we get frame over time. This means how many frames we render in one second. We'll do the same for 0.1, so we'll have 1 over 0.1. This equals 10. So we have an FPS of 10. Now in the script, create a variable called frames per second. Make the variable equal to 1 over delta time. Now we have to display the FPS onto the text label. We do this by changing the text property of the text label. We can add some text before the FPS to let the player know what this number means. Let's also put the text label in the center of the screen so we can see it easily while testing. Let's play the game. The first issue you might notice is that the FPS changes very fast. We only want to update the FPS every so often, for example, every 0.3 seconds. In the script, create a variable called wait time. This tells us how many seconds to wait before updating the FPS. Create another variable, call it last updated time. The initial value will be zero. Inside the event, we'll get the current time using the tick function. This gives us the number of seconds that has passed since the 1st of January 1970. Then, we can calculate how many seconds have passed since the last time we updated the FPS. Since we made the initial value equal to zero, the FPS will always be updated instantly the first time this event is triggered. To check if we can update the FPS, we'll compare time passed to wait time. And we'll put the old code inside the if statement. We also need to change the value of last updated time since we just updated the FPS. Let's run the game again. Now the FPS only changes every 0.3 seconds, but between each update, the FPS is very inconsistent. We want something similar to the Roblox Studio FPS counter. One thing we can do is find the average delta time over a time period. To do this, we need to create a list that will store each delta time in the current time period. Each time the event fires, we need to put the delta time inside the list. And each time we update the FPS, we need to find the average of the delta times. The first thing we'll need is the sum of all delta times. We'll be adding each delta time one by one, so make the variable's initial value equal to zero. We'll use a for loop to iterate over each delta time. And for each delta time, we'll add it to the total delta time variable. The average is calculated by dividing the sum by the number of delta times. We just worked out the sum, now we need the number of delta times. This is the length of the list. Now we can calculate the average delta time.
and when calculating the FPS, replace delta time with average delta time. Now that the current time period has ended, we need to empty the list. Let's play the game again. Now the FPS is much more consistent. The only remaining issue is the number of decimal places. Create another variable at the top of the script. This tells us how many decimal places we want the FPS to be rounded to. We'll use the string format function to round the FPS. The first argument is percent dot. We'll then add on the number of decimal places and we'll end it with a lowercase f. The second argument is the FPS variable. This will round the FPS to one decimal place. It also makes sure the FPS will always have the same number of digits. For example, if the FPS is a whole number, a point zero will be added to the end of the number. Make sure you replace the original FPS variable with the formatted FPS variable when changing the text label. Now let's play the game. The FPS is rounded to one decimal place. We can go to the settings and change our maximum FPS and we'll see the FPS change. If we increase our graphics quality, the FPS should drop. And we can compare it to the Roblox Studio FPS counter. They both display a similar FPS. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you have any ideas you want me to make, drop them in the comments. You'll also find a link to the Discord server in the description where you can send your ideas. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you'll have a wonderful day.